Good afternoon. I came in today to record this message in English because I just finished recording this message in in three. I can't. So I thought it's good to be able to communicate also in our brothers and sisters in English. And the topic of my message today is emotional pain, the cause of our woe, part one, and maybe part two. There are so many things going on right now in Ghana, our motherland, and everybody is reacting towards uh, what is happening uh, in regard to the Galamse and the government and everything. I am not a blogger. I don't blog and I don't but as a citizen of Ghana, and now that God has opened the door for me that I'm able to speak and put my messages on YouTube, I felt that I have to look into the issues and see if I can find a little nugget of solution to suggest and put it across to my brothers and sisters and let us look into it if we can use it as our point of contact to bring solution into the situation that we are dealing with. Oh my God. Sorry. that we can um, bring solution to the situation that we are dealing with. And to come together, to unite and progress in the country. First of all, I just want to say this. And I always say this in my messages. That's my trademark. Everyone that is speaking about issues, from the media to bloggers and the people in Ghana, politicians and non-politicians, independent, and party affiliates. Everybody is right. Because I said it. Everyone, if you listen to my message that I put it on YouTube about everybody is born to win, each one of us have a calling and we are all born to win. That's the truth. We are all born to do something. So Every one of us has an assignment. If we do not accept each other's course of life and purpose of life and appreciate what God has called each one of us to do, we are not going to succeed. Yes. So whatever everyone is doing, whatever everyone is saying is good based upon where the person is coming from. 
the vantage point of the person who is expressing him or herself based upon her experience and everything that she has gone through is out of that she's speaking from. Sorry. Hey, son. I'm on the media. I will talk to you later. Based upon that, where the person is coming from, will determine he or she's respond to the issues at hand. And I remember there was a time uh, Kofi Adoma Mwangweni of COVID TV posed a question on one of his, his segments and he asked what is wrong with us and what is going on in that nature is it lack of leadership actually in Ghana, we don't like leadership. We have leaders. We have good leaders that can lead the country to success. We have great minds that are hidden. They are there. We have gifted people that are so profound and powerful intelligent men and intelligent women who are hidden from the people because a lot don't want to come out for people to insult them. Not because they are intentionally going to insult them but we are dealing with an issue that we have not identified it yet and to find solution to it. So people speak from their experience and their vantage point. When issue comes up and sometimes, many a times, let me say it, it tends to be an insult and character assassination. So it is difficult for people like me and other people, we don't want to come out and speak. But I'm, I'm, a, I'm now out. I got more videos in YouTube now, so I might as well bring something out. I am not coming to speak against any government or any individual, no, you will never hide it from me. I am a master builder. My call or my calling is to bring solution to a problem. So for me, I'm bringing a small nugget of a solution. If we will take it, accept it, and study it carefully, and see if it fits the profile. I give you permission to bring your opinions. Your opinions is good. Everybody's opinions is good. But not opinion of insults, but opinion of thick thinking, deep thinking. Because deep call for deep. So I believe in intelligent reasoning that we can bring our ideas together so we can find solution to problems. I'm not coming to criticize anybody. That's not the way I operate. As a natural born counselor and also a trained counselor, you always have to take a, a case and you study the case 
and then you find solutions. So this tape is going to be a tape of solution that I have seen from a case that is at hand and I am bringing my solution. I will address the case and then at the end I will bring the solution and see what we can do with it. So, let's go. Here we are. The first thing we have to understand is that what is happening, the reason why so many people reacting the way they are reacting in the form of insult and accusations and speaking regulatory and all that that is going on some against the leadership and the government and everybody in between is because we have been suffered a great deal of emotional pain or emotional wreck. It did not start today. This is from the foundation of the earth humans. Humans has been in the grips of pain for a long time, for a long time, from ethnos, from the beginning of the earth. Ever since they fell from the stage of grace, ever since Adam and Eve fell from state of grace, or human race, fell from grace. Adam. Yes. In three. Ever since human race fell from grace, the stage, the state of grace, they entered into the realm of time and mind. Yes. Man entered into the realm of time and mind and lost the awareness of their well-being or their being in general. At that point, here is the impact that the fall of a man affected them from then. Man started to perceive themselves as meaningless, fragmented in an alien universe. They, they were not living in the alien universe. They were living in the garden. So you have to be able to identify these two stages. They never was, a, was exposed to this vast Aliens world. God kept them in a garden under his protection. The other world was outside the garden of Eden. And they didn't have access to the other side of the garden and Eden. They only have the authority and the right. Their home was to stay in the garden. But when the fall of man came, they were cast out of the garden of Eden into the alien universe. A big space of land that they have no idea where they are. And they have to start figure things out. They were completely disconnected. They were no longer connected. They are unconnected. From the source and also to each other. Adam, the man began to see the woman as evil. The woman began to see the man as evil. So the unity that used to be there, that protect them, that make them understand each other when they were living in the garden, they lost it. So from that moment, there was misunderstanding between them. There was no law there was no longer unity. There was no longer awareness of who is each other because that sense of awareness 
was taken away from them. And that was the beginning of the pain they began to experience. Emotionally, they became wrecked. They couldn't figure out what was, do, what was happening to them. They couldn't figure out what was going on. So now everybody has a mind of his own and everybody is doing whatever they can to survive. They become survivors and not co-bearers co, co and co-partners anymore. Pain is inevitable in your life, you and me. Pain, because it's our inherent. We inherited it from generations gone by, past. That is one of the things we came to this earth to inherit. Every human being has inherited pain. Whether you believe it or not, that's your opinion. You have your right to your opinion, just as much as I do. So you just hear me and, get and, and find something out of what I'm about to talk about. So, pain is a victable. As long as you are identified with your mind, as long as every one of us is identified with our minds, and every human being is identified with your mind, that is what your ident you find yourself operating. Since the day you were born to this day, you would die. Unless you find yourself out of the 100% humans and move from 100% and, 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 and join the 5% who have had a different mindset, a change of mind, awakening in their spirit to begin to know who they are. And tap into the I am, the restoration of the real you that is inside of you that is not being overshadowed by the pain and the agony and the emotional wreck that we are all experiencing on a daily basis. When you become aware of who you are, when you become aware of the stage where you are and you are able to connect with the I am, that live inside of you, which has been dormant and been dead and sleeping giant inside of you, and you move from the past to the present now and forget about the past and be able to use now to proceed to gain access to your future, then you can make a change in your life. So this is where we are missing. Ghana doesn't lack great leaders. Ghana doesn't lack great brains and great minds. We have them. But we don't know how to look for them and connect with them and accept them and bring them into where they're supposed to be because the majority is living in an emotional pain and emotional wreck. Yes. This is what can cause what we are seeing now. Which is to say, as long as you are unconscious, spiritually speaking, I am talking here primarily of emotional pain, which is also the main cause of physical pain and physical disease. This emotional pain can cause your physical being to sick. It will cause it to begin to experience disease like cancer, ulcer, and actually it can cause death. Physical death. People have died because of unforgiveness. People have died because of res resentment. People have died because of anger. Yes. So, this is the diabolic disease that is affecting so many people. 
And unless we began to trace our woes into this and begin to search our hearts and our minds, where is this pain coming from? And why am I feeling the way I'm feeling? Why am I not having peace in myself? Why is it that everything irritates me? Why am I so angry? Why am I so resentful to everything? We haven't asked those questions. We haven't asked ourselves those questions. Everybody, everybody is a victim to what I'm talking about. This has not, nothing to do with the president. This has nothing to do with the king, the queen. The cat down the road and sister watermelon over there. This has nothing, this has to do with human. If you are a human being, this, you are part of this circle. And until we come to this point and realize that it's not fresh and blood that we are resting against, but we are resting against principalities and powers. We are, reckon, we are wrestling against emotional wreck being inflicted on us individually. And the pain we have sustained has caused us emotionally wrecked. And because we are emotionally wrecked, we are reacting. These are the symptoms of the disease called emotional pain or emotional wreck. It can cause physical pain and it can cause physical disease. Let's take it, let's break it down one by one. I got this tape that I've done it in three. I managed to speak this thing in three. Now, those of you who are going to listen to the English, you will be more depth. I have more power to express myself in the English than the three. But I break it down, I, I took my time to break it down in three that people who will read it, who will listen to it, will understand where I'm coming from until I got into part, I uh, think part three, part four, part, and a little bit of part five is where I began to break down the solution that can help us to solve this problem. So I'm going to talk about the the situ I mean the whole problem, the issue, and then I, will, I see if the, my tape has enough tape for me to bring the solution to you people. If not, I will recapture the solution side of it on another uh, segment. The first that every one of us experience when you are in emotional wreck, the first, the first symptoms you can see and identify in everyone's life, if the person is emotional wreck, is resentment you resent everything resentment is when somebody offends you and you cannot forgive and you harbor iniquity in your heart you harbor the pain of the 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 incident that that has happened that you were not able to deal with it you resent the person and you can harbor this iniquity, you can harbor this pain in your heart and you will hate that person. You would not want to have anything to do with anyone. The moment you hear the person's name, you get you can uh, uh, heart, uh, have heart flashes. You resent the existence of the person. And if you do not check that emotional energy that you are receiving, the vibes of that resentment energy, and you keep it, and you pamper it, and you predicate it, you took a bath with it, and you powder it, and you begin to nurture it, it grows, and it becomes hatred. If you get hurt, and you do not deal with it immediately or find a room to deal with it and you leave it to grow 
it developed into hatred. You hate the person because he has done you wrong and you are not able to deal with it. Physically go back and talk with the person to forgive you and reconcile with the people or the person. You begin to hate them. It developed into hate. And you hate the town, you hate the people, you hate the country, you hate the person, personality, you hate the church, you hate the chief, you hate the people, you hate the group, you hate your teacher, you hate the student, you hate the party, you hate the government, you hate the, the, the councilman, you hate everybody. It become a chronic disease. It become a cancerous disease in your system. And as you entertain it beyond hatred, guess what? You begin to have self-pity. People who double in with emotional wreck and don't deal with it start begin to have self-pity. They are doing it to me. Why am I why am I going through this? Why is me? Why can't I become successful? Why is it that everybody hates me and I'm not getting to and I don't have no help? Then you begin to come self-pity and you feel pity for yourself. You are resentful to something that you don't want to deal with it and you become hateful to it. Now you are begin to have a self-pity to justify your inability to deal with these issues. And if it goes on, guess what? You begin to feel guilty because you think you are the cause of it. And if you don't come out of the guilt and you stay blame, you blame yourself for somebody else's wrongdoing or is your own wrongdoing? It's direct or indirect. Anything that happened to you is two edges so It's either from your end or from somebody's end. But you have to deal with both sides. You cannot deal with one side and leave the other side dangling. No, you have to deal with both sides. And if you do not deal with the anger, when the anger show up at your doorsteps, uh, your, the guilt show up at your doorstep and you don't deal with the guilt. Guess what? The next uncle that show up is called anger. You get so angry about everything and everything irritates you. Slightest thing, you get so irritated that you can blow everything out of you can explode like a timing bomb. So you see, you see what emotional pain can cause you. We are all timing bomb walking around because we are emotionally wrecked. What is wrong with Ghanaians is that we have been long time abused in different levels. We have entertained abusive relationship, abusive language, abusive behavior, abusive whew, from all levels. And we are so hurt. So hurt. We are hurting so bad that we don't know how to deal with the hurt anymore so the pain is unbearable and some people if they don't know how to deal with it they get into depression and those who cannot handle the depression they commit suicide ghana was not the country that people used to commit suicide but today i see it every day When did we get there? And how do we get out? We are so emotional wreck 
that we cannot find a way of working together to bring unity, but rather divisive. We are so emotionally wrecked that we are so jealous of each other that instead of us come together and do it, we are, we, I will do everything to destroy what you are doing. We are so emotionally wrecked that we don't see any good thing in each other. We are so emotionally wrecked that we blame everybody about our woes. We are so emotionally wrecked that we have become quick fix. We become lazy in our behavior. We become everything this emotionally wreck can throw on us. So now we become fault funders. We find fault in everything. And we blame everybody. We blame the government. We blame the leaders. We blame the kings. We bring the the, the, the queens, we bring the, the pastors, we bring everybody minus ourselves. We always pointing finger to people. Please, we need to come to a place where we can listen to everybody and accept everybody crying. I always say is that everybody is doing a good job. All the bloggers and all those our youth people who are speaking out, they are doing a good job because everybody has a potential, a gift that God has given to everyone. There are people who are born to be fighters, boxers. They do their job. There are people who are, who are born and gifted to be cleaners. They are doing it. We have leaders. They are leading. We have journalists, they are doing their job. Then we have people that talk, they speak. When they see something, they talk. Let me tell you something. Why are you upset? Why are you condemning those who have seen things and talking about it and you people are going after them? Let me tell you this truth. When Jesus Christ came on this earth, he knew Judas was going to betray him, but he, he called him. Everybody has a son. Because my calling doesn't sound good and fair to you, doesn't mean that it is not a calling from God. Listen to this carefully. It, you, your, the internal wisdom of God, the magnificent, the magnificent wisdom of God, supersede you and me, our thinking. Do you want to tell me that Jesus didn't know that Judas was a betrayer? He knew very well. He needs somebody to do the job. He needs. It's a job.